Hi guys, welcome back to Breaking the Cycle. Long time no see. I know it has been a minute since I filmed. I think it's been almost a year, actually. My name is Tracy. I am a licensed therapist in long-term recovery, and Breaking the Cycle is where I share my recovery stories and tips to help you build a happy and successful life after addiction. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details of you know what's been going on in my life for the last year, but I will just say that I am. So I'm really excited to be back here, and my intention is to be back here a lot because I just have so much that I want to share with you guys. So today's video is your complete guide to getting a job as a felon and not just getting a job as a felon, but getting a good job as a felon. So if you are someone who is struggling to find work because of your background, or if you are someone who is struggling in a job that you hate because of your background, or you've had to deal with super awkward interviews because of your background and things like that, if you in any way feel held back by your background, background by your felonies on your record this video is for you this is a subject that I'm very passionate about why because I have been there before we get started really quick I just want to say that I have noticed the growth on this channel I know that it probably doesn't look like a lot to you guys but we have over 600 people now and to me you know I didn't know if anybody was gonna give a shit about what I had to say or not so the fact that there's over 600 people that are benefiting from or at least enjoying my videos is pretty killer. That's pretty amazing to me. So I really appreciate that and I'm really glad that everybody's here and I really hope that we keep growing. I would love to be able to do more of this because I just have so much that I want to share with you guys. One more thing before we get started really quick. I just want to give you a little update. I got a new puppy. One second, one second. Okay, this is Enzo. Enzo is an Aussie, an Australian Shepherd. He is eight weeks old and he's super sweet. I have another dog, she's nine and she's a beagle mix and she is, um, she's adjusting, she's adjusting. And yesterday she even started to kind of do little play jumps at him. So I think she's coming around. But I just had to show you Enzo because he's the freaking cutest thing I've ever seen. Okay. So we are going to go through this topic in four parts. We're gonna talk about how to handle the application process, the interview process, how to tip the scales in your favor, and a little piece on some resources like higher education and expungement that could help you with this process. You know, I am somebody who's 10 years in recovery. At this point, my felonies are expunged, but I did have two felonies on my record. I had a burglary charge and I had a possession of a controlled substance charge that was a C and a D felony back when it was the letter system. And when I first got out of prison in 2014, I struggled very hard to find a job. I had a lot of super embarrassing interviews. I had a lot of rejections and I even went through a time where I was completely unemployed as a single mom right after I got my own place for about six months. I had even interviewed at this Chipotle, the Mexican Grill, like an hour outside of my town and got denied there. And at that point, you know, after looking for a job for a year and being denied at freaking Chipotle, an hour away even, I was feeling super defeated, super hopeless. I was in a really bad situation financially, like literally wondering how I was gonna feed my children. Now today, obviously, I am a licensed therapist. I have a master's degree. Like I said, my felonies are expunged, but I was also able to get really good jobs before they were expunged. I got jobs as a property manager at an apartment complex at a mental health center, at a hospital. So I know personally that it is possible to get good jobs with felonies. I also know that it is possible to get your dream career with felonies. Regardless of what your background holds, do not settle for a subpar life because you made some bad decisions a few years ago. I hear this all the time from clients and things like that. They say things like, well, you know, I used to want to be a nurse, but I can't do that now because of my background. And it just makes me want to slap them in the face. No, you can do that. You can still do that. 
you can probably do it with a felony on your record, but if you can't, then get your felony expunged because you can do that. There is always a loophole, there is always a way. So step one is the application process, and you guys know as a felon, right from the rip, things are difficult when it comes to finding a job. From the very first step of the process, the application, you run into that pesky little box. Have you been convicted of a felony? Do you check the box or do you not check the box? At first, I did not check the box. I ignored the box or I would check no just because I was too embarrassed to fess up to it. I would even try to lie at interviews and say, nope, nope everything will be fine on the background check. Let me tell you, that doesn't work out very well. Mm, it doesn't. But that that's just how uncomfortable I was with my past at the time. And I share that because I want you to know that you don't need to be that uncomfortable about your past. You don't need to put yourself in that kind of situation like I did. Do you know how many people in this world have experienced a drug problem or who have a family member who has experienced a drug problem nowadays? It is unfortunately much more common than we think. You don't need to be embarrassed because you are a human being. Okay, but so I'm going to share with you what to do with that box. So first of all, you want to check it. Most employers do check, they do verify. So yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but you do have to check the box. Now, I always recommend leaving a brief explanation next to that box. Sometimes there's a space for it, a few, a couple lines to write, you know, what it's about. Sometimes there's not. Whether there's a space or not, I want you to write a brief explanation because we never want to leave people assuming anything about us in terms of employment anyways, right? because when they have the opportunity to assume, their imaginations can run wild. And that I've been convicted of a felony thing could be a lot of different things. So quite honestly, an employer would probably be relieved to hear that it was just something to do with drugs back in the day and that you didn't murder anyone. So for the explanation, I use what I call my 1-3 rule. So the 1-3 rule is a way to address your charge and address the situation in a way that leaves your interviewer still viewing you in a positive light. Psychologically, it allows them to remember that situation in a positive manner instead of a negative manner because the negative parts that we talk about are so brief and they're so sandwiched between positive things. So the 1-3 rule means one sentence about your charge two sentences about your come up. So an example of how I would write that statement on a job application and how I have written this statement many times is, you know, previously struggled with substance abuse. I've been in recovery for 10 years. I'm happy to answer any questions. It could be anything you like as a variation of that, but just one sentence about your charge and then two sentences kind of smothering that information in positivity. You know, that way, number one, they're not assuming. And number two, they know you're an honest person. Both of those are already good signs. The second thing about the application process that I need you to do is put in a resume. Now, a lot of jobs require a resume nowadays, but some of them don't. Whether they require one or not, I want you to put in a resume. You know, a job interview is not the time to be humble, especially if you have felonies on your record, because if you do have those felonies, you already innately have to work a little bit harder than the other applicants around you. You want to take every chance that you can get to highlight all of the amazing things about you. And that's exactly what a resume is, right? It's literally a piece of paper talking about how amazing you are. Whether they ask for a resume or not, I want you to take that opportunity to show them all of those good things about you and turn a resume in. If you don't have a resume yet, I would definitely make one and I would put some effort into it. This is important. There are free resume templates online. You can literally take out their words, put your words in and have a very professionally written resume for free in like five minutes. So there is no excuse today not to have a good resume. A good cover letter can help as well. Okay, so right there from the application process, number one, check the box. Number two, provide a brief explanation. And number three, turn in a resume. Also, something else that I want to note about the application process is no matter what the job is for, no matter what you think their HR policies are, apply 
anyway. That's really my number one rule. I should have led with that. I know that a lot of companies say they don't hire felons, right? But not hiring felons is an HR thing. It's not like government law that has to be placed in stringent effect. It is more flexible than you think it is. So whether you think this company hires felons or not, apply anyway, please, or you will severely limit yourself. Okay, step two. So you got in the application and you got the interview. Interviews used to be so terrible for me because I was so ashamed of myself. Oh my gosh. I would get all red faced and not know what to say and I'm mumbling around and it was just terrible. It was terrible, but it doesn't need to be that way. I'm going to give you a few different tips for the interview process right now that you can use to, again, psychologically leave your interviewer with a positive reflection of their time with you. So during the interview, they're probably going to want to know about your charge. They probably are. They're probably going to ask, and that's going to be awkward. Yes, and that's unfortunate, but it's just something that we have to deal with, okay? But it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. Okay, so what we're going to do in the interview is the same thing that we used in the application. We're going to use that one three rule. When they ask you what your charge is about, you know, you could say, well, I had a possession charge from substance use, but I've been clean for 10 years now and I've earned my master's degree and blah, blah, blah. You're going to share one sentence about your charge that answers whatever they need to know about it. Give them the bare minimum of what they need to know about it. And then sandwich that with two positive things about your come up since that time. Maybe something that you've accomplished or your amount of clean time or whatever that may be. So that means that yes, you're a felon, but throughout that whole interview process, you only spent one sentence. That's like 10 seconds talking about the negative things, talking about your charges. All of the rest of the interview was positive, right? Everything else said during the interview was positive. So when that interviewer looks back on the interview, he's not going to remember that brief 10 seconds of unease. He's going to remember a positive, strong, honest individual. Now, if you sit there and say, well, you know, I I used to do drugs. I spent, you know, about four years in prison and I, you know, I've been clean for a little while since then. I'm doing pretty good now you're over focusing on the negative you're over focusing on your charge you don't they don't need all the details of that you give them one sentence that provides them with the details that they need and then you move on advice number two is when you are sharing this information i want you to share it with confidence which is exactly what i did not do back in all my job interviews but sharing this with confidence actually has a psychological effect on the interviewer as well if you are able to talk about your past in a strong and confident manner with an acceptance, then they could probably see you as someone who has moved on from that part of their lives, who is strong in their recovery. You know, all they really want to know is that you're not going to relapse in the next couple weeks. That's all they're trying to find here. The more confident you are, the better the impression that you leave. Tip number three. I want you to share your amount of clean time. And it doesn't matter if that clean time is 10 years or 10 days, although obviously the more clean time you have under your belt, the better in this situation. Sharing your clean time tells your interviewer, my sobriety is something that is important to me. My sobriety is something that I keep track of. It's something that matters. And tip number four, I want you to share at some point in the interview a way that your past has benefited who you are today. So if you're someone who has been through addiction or who has been to prison or things like that, then you're probably a very adaptable person. Maybe you're really good with sales. You're really good at talking to people. Or maybe you're just really super appreciative to have this job opportunity. Use your past in your favor. Share something that makes this seem like a positive aspect for you. Of course, it can also be helpful to share all of your accomplishments that you've had during your clean time, whether that is job related or not. You could you know, mention that you're closing on a new house next week. Mention that you've got this degree. Mention that you've spent the last three years holding a steady job. Again, a job interview is not the time to be modest. 
So list those accomplishments. How to tip the scales in your favor. Now there's a couple things that you can do to tip the scales in your favor and make yourself a more desirable candidate. I think this is what helped me get my foot in the door of the mental health field. And I strongly believe that it's one of the most critical things that you can do if you hope to get a good job. And that is to offer a skill set. A skill set does not have to be a college degree. It could be. It could be. That's definitely a good skill set to offer. But if you don't have that, that's okay. It could also be an online certification program. It could also be a technical certificate. It could also be the couple years that you spent at the career center in high school. Hell, it could even be the eight years that you spent as a single mom managing chaos in your household, managing your household alone, babysitting your brothers and sisters, you know, whatever applies to the job that you're going for it can just be something that you have years of life experience in and if that's something that you don't have right now that is something that you can get that is something that you can work on in the future you know getting your dream career is not always something that happens overnight becoming a therapist didn't happen overnight for me i didn't step into that job i stepped into a job as a truck stop waitress and I worked my way up to this job. You can also help yourself along by looking at places that are already felon friendly. Obviously, we don't wanna limit ourselves to that, and that's what this video is about, is not having limits. If you're just starting out, if you don't have a skill set, it can definitely be helpful to go to a place that's already felon friendly to increase your odds of getting employment www.helpforfelons.org has a very comprehensive list of companies that are felon friendly. So that can be very helpful when you are looking for places to apply. Another thing that you can consider is recovery coaching. You know, recovery coach positions are everywhere now. They're at hospitals, they're at courthouses, they are in uh, rehab programs, they're everywhere. Recovery coach positions are made for people who are in recovery. So your employer is going to be a little more willing to accept a blurry background. A lot of times employers will even pay for your recovery coaching certification program. So don't freak out if you don't have a certification at this point, go ahead and apply anyway. And lastly, I wanna talk about some resources that can help you get your dream career or help you get a better job with a felony on your record. And that is number one, higher education, and number two, expungement. I firmly believe that these are two things that helped me a lot in the process. Now, I will circle back to what I said before. I was able to get very good jobs before I got my felonies expunged. Now, I know a lot of people hear the higher education thing and they just automatically think, no, it's too expensive, I don't have time, whatever the case may be. Keep in mind that higher education is a lot different now than it used to be. It is often geared towards adult learners and higher education, again, does not just have to mean a college degree. Even having just some college classes under your belt can be extremely helpful. There are online certification programs in just about any topic you can imagine nowadays. There are financing options for just about everything that you can imagine nowadays that offer small monthly payments. I know that everybody's situation is different, but I will say that I did go to school as a single mother while working full time for six years to earn a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree. Was it hard? Yes, yes, it was very, very, very hard. Was it worth it? Also, yes. And I know that if I can do that, then you can do that too. You know, maybe you can only take one class at a time. Maybe it takes you five years to get your degree instead of four. That's okay. There are alternative paths out there to reaching your goals. Just because it is not the typical path doesn't mean that there are no options for you. And the same thing goes with expungement. I know a lot of people automatically hear expungement and they've heard of that seven year rule and they're like, well, I can't do this because I don't have the seven year rule, whatever the case may be. Now, laws vary in every state and I'm not going to pretend to be a law expert, but I am someone who has had their felonies expunged and I am someone who had their felonies expunged prior to being out of prison for seven years. I do know that it's possible. I do know that there are loopholes to getting this done. I would highly recommend talking to an attorney. A lot of times they will give you a consultation completely free and seeing if you're a candidate for expungement. 
there are always loopholes. You know, that's something that I struggle to understand about a lot of my fellow people in recovery. You know, when we are in active addiction, we don't take no for an answer. Let's say you wake up dope sick and you don't have a car. And so you ask your roommate if you can borrow the car and they say no. Do you just say, okay, that's fine. I guess I'll go watch some TV now. I'll just call it a day. And you just go on about your business? No, you don't do that. You do what you have to do to get the car and get your money and get your dope, right? So why are we not applying that same attitude now? You know, we read a a policy on a company newsletter that says we don't hire felons. And so we automatically just say, okay, well, they don't hire felons, so I'm not going to apply there. Since when are we the type of people who take no for an answer? We're not. And there is no need to be. There is always a loophole. Do not take no for an answer because if you do, you will be settling for a subpar life in recovery. You will be settling for a life that is less than what you are worth. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I do hope to be back on here a lot more regularly. I want to focus a lot on mental health, a lot on mindset, things like that. I don't know. Just give me your opinions. We're just thinking of things. We're just throwing things out there. So I would love to hear your opinions on that. Oh, also, I have stepped it up a little bit on my social media pages. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I do put daily journal prompts in the stories. I also put daily action steps in the posts. And those are daily action steps to improving your mental health and building a bomb life in recovery. So small action steps that you can take every day just to kind of get you headed in the right direction. So check out those social medias if you haven't already. And I will see you again soon.